Power injection is an important part of LED pixel light systems. It helps with long runs or strings with a lot of pixels by supplying extra power when you need it. LED systems experience voltage drop over long distances because of the electrical resistance of your components. As your power travels from your power source to your lights, it encounters resistance in your wires, your controller, your lights, and really anything else that it has to run through. That resistance eats up power, often in the form of heat or light, reducing it as it travels further from its source. This reduction in power is called voltage drop. And after a while, all those hungry components cause so much voltage drop that there's not enough power to fulfill the components needs further down the line. So to remedy this, we inject power at certain points along the line to bring the voltage back up. This video will help you understand how to do power injection for an LED pixel light system so that you can prevent voltage drop from causing your lights to misbehave. Power injection requires you to run additional power wires from one of three places and inject it into your circuit or your zone of LEDs. The first place you can run additional power from is the controller. So the dig quad has additional positive and negative terminals that you can use for this purpose. The distro eight port has lots of ports in general. So you can use some of them for power injection. To do power injection with this method, you simply run a positive and negative wire from your extra controller terminal to a power injection point along your string. You can inject power anywhere along the way. However, many strings will come with power injection leads at the beginning and end of each string. Simply use your waterproof solder tubes to make a connection. Let's walk you through a practical example. All right, welcome to my power injection demonstration system. We have 600 LEDs in five volt LED strips. I'm gonna use strips for this demonstration, even though we've been talking strings, the principles are the same, but strips allow us to get a lot more pixels into a smaller area. So I got a five volt power supply. I've got the eight port distro board. I am running one zone with 600 lights on it. It's gonna be way too much for a five volt system, but that's why we're doing it, so that we can show you how to inject power a few different ways. So the first method of power injection that we are going to demonstrate is running power from a, an additional port, an extra port on your board to our power injection point here in the middle of these two strips. I'm gonna open up WLED and show you what we're dealing with. So right now I've got on a red light setting. It doesn't require a ton of power. It's at 50%. I'm actually gonna take that to white, which requires a lot more power. And you can see that we have some serious voltage drop going on. So we've got bright white here, and then we start to lose brightness here at the end of our first strip. And our second strip just isn't even close. And when we go to full brightness, it's even worse. So we get discoloration towards the end of our first strip and then the second strip just isn't making it. So we are gonna power down and hook up some additional power. Right, we've got red to positive, black to negative. Red to positive, black to negative on our power injection wires. Let's fire it up, see where we're at. Unless you change it, WLED is gonna default to 50% at this orange color. And it's looking pretty good, it's looking a lot better. However, we are going to go to our white. And I see some brightness dropping off and I see some flickering as I get down uh, to the end of the second string. So still dealing with some voltage drop there. Now let's go to full brightness. All right, and at full brightness, we're definitely dealing with voltage drop. You can see we're just not making it all the way to the end. So these pixels 
are consuming power, consuming power, consuming power. And by the time we get down to here, there's just not enough for these pixels to function properly. It appears that power injection after 300 LEDs on a five volt system is doing the trick for the first 300, but the second 300, not so much. The second option is to run power directly from the same power supply that is powering the controller. So with this method, you bypass the controller and simply inject more power down the line at an injection point. Let's walk you through another practical example. Next, we're gonna demonstrate how to run power directly from the power source to the injection point. So let's power down and switch our setup. So what we've done here is we have introduced some 18 gauge connectors with a fuse block built into these wires. Um, the nice thing about running from the board is that you have fuse protection for these ports. When you go straight to the power source, there's no fuse protection. And so as an added measure of safety, I've put these in with a fuse block. We've got our positive to positive terminal on the power source and we've got negative to a negative terminal on our power supply. Still connected there at our power injection point, halfway between these two strips. All right, let's power it up, see what it looks like. Again, defaulting to our 50% orange, it's looking pretty good. Let's go to our white. It's actually looking a little bit better than it was going from the controller. So it seems like the controller was uh, maybe eating up some of that voltage as it ran through there. So let's go to brightness, the full brightness and see where we're at. So the first 300 looking great with power injection at 300 LEDs from a, on a five volt system for these specific strip lights. And I would say you may even eke out 400 without any uh, weird stuff going on. Now, if you're not running full brightness or full white, you know, if we go down to 50% brightness, we still have some discoloration here. And then if we go to effects, try out just a little breathe here. Those seem to be performing really consistently. So you may notice that the second strip isn't quite as bright. Part of that is just simply the strips themselves. So these are not the same strips. This first one is an Alitove strip and it's in a waterproof casing. The second one is a BTF strip. All right, so that is the second method for injecting power. Where we're going straight from the power source to the lights themselves. Highly recommend keeping a fuse uh, on these lines so that you have that added protection. And the third option is to run power from an additional power source. This option is slightly more complex because your power sources can't share the same positive circuit. Therefore, you have to maintain a separate positive circuit for each power source. The advantage is that instead of running wire from the original power supply that might be clear on the other end of the house, you can place the power supply closer to the location where you need to inject power. So let's walk through an example of what this one looks like. So we're gonna bring in an additional five volt power supply. This is a bit more complex as you have to keep the positive circuits for each power supply separate. So let's power down, we'll get it hooked up and walk you through it. We have introduced a second power supply and we have hooked up a positive negative to our positive negative terminals and we have run that 
and we've connected the positive to the positive wire feeding the second strip and attached the negative to the, the negative power injection to this second strip. Now, if we look at the connections between the first strip and the second strip, you'll notice there's no positive connection between these two strips. So we have isolated the positive circuit between these two strips. We do not want those to touch. That will wreak havoc on your power supplies and can be dangerous. However, the negative and the data wires are still connected. So our negative from the between the first and second strip is connected and our data between the first and second strip is connected. As a side note, in case you haven't noticed, uh, these two positives go to the same connector. So it doesn't matter which one of these positive wires, whether you use the power injection or the positive wire that was originally in your connector, it doesn't matter. They go to the same place. Same with the, your negatives. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use this negative and tie these together or if you use the negative power injection, they all go to the same place on your LED strip. So let's plug them in and see how it goes. So we're gonna fire up our first power supply and we'll power up our second power supply. Da -da -da -da. Second strip is just different, doesn't have the waterproof cover on it. All right, so let's go to white and white looks really good. And let's power up to 100%. All right, so here we go. Our first strip looks great. We have power feeding the beginning of it. We have power injection to the middle of it. And that is looking fantastic. Now this second power supply is on its own powering our second strip of 300 lights. And so we're having the same issue that we originally had. So with this particular light setup, with these strips, it looks like a five volt system can power about 150 LEDs, no problem, which means you're gonna have to inject power at least every 300 LEDs. If you wanna, if you wanna play it safe, consider injecting power every 200 or 250 LEDs. All right, there you go. That's how you run power injection from a separate power supply. All right, when you're done, test your LEDs to make sure they're functioning properly. They should light up uniformly with no visible brightness variations or weird flickering or inaccurate colors. If they're having problems, double check the connections, the power supply, and consider adjusting the power injection spacing if necessary. It's really important to follow manufacturer guidelines and specifications for all of the components in your system. Be mindful of the quality of your power supplies, proper wire gauge, the amount of current that you're drawing across the system. Always prioritize safety by following electrical standards and guidelines. And as always, please consult with a professional electrician if you're unsure about any aspect of your system.